All right, welcome back to another exciting adventure in Turt Fergland. All right, so today's lesson is on work. So what does it mean to do work? Now, usually what I do in class every time when we do this, I'll grab my handy-dandy vampire bowling ball that lays in the corner. And there's my vo vampire bowling ball. So I'll grab my handy-dandy vampire bowling ball, and I'll get a student in class to hold the vampire bowling ball and just sit there and hold on to the vampire bowling ball. I have no idea why this student now has little ghostly legs. But anyway, so anyway, here it is getting close to Halloween. So anyway, here's my student. Oh, apparently it's a girl student this time. Anyway, they're sitting there holding on the bowling ball. And I'll be like, all right, hold on to that bowling ball. And eventually what starts happening that arm starts to get a little bit of weak, and usually after a few seconds, vampire bowling ball goes to the ground. I'll then ask the class, I might even try right now, if you were to just sit there and hold on to that bowling ball, are you doing any work to hold on to that ball? And the answer is, I've got 20 people in front of me, and they all say yes! You are doing work if you sit there and hold that bowling ball up in the air. And it does. I mean, you'll get tired. You'll feel bad. Unfortunately, the answer is no. Uh, and this will be, you, at this point, how my multiple choice questions are. The answer is no, and I will try and trick you like this on test. I'll go ahead and tell you. The question on the test is, a car is parked on a hillside. And you're trying to hold the car on the hill. So here's a car parked on the hillside. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, that's a good-looking car. And you hold the car on the hill. Are you doing any work by holding the car on the hill? And at this time, I see several saying no, which would be the correct answer when you see this question on your next test. You're not doing any work. Oh, wow. All right. Well, how come we're not doing work? Here's the big thing about doing work. Not only, like, let's take a look at the bowling ball. Not only do you have to use a force, but to actually have work done, guess what something actually has to do? Move. You've said the magic words. There has to, it has to move at the same time. So say, for example, you've got this car that you're just keeping from rolling down a hill. You're using a force. That much is true. But what are you not doing? You're not moving it. If it's not moving, then you're not doing any work. Is that easy enough? So what about if you push the car up the hill? Yes, then you are doing a force and you are moving it. So at this point, we're kind of getting it down. In order to do work, oh my goodness, i got to find me a blank sheet of paper. Ah, Here we go. So in order to do work, and here's going to be the equation for work, W. Now notice how I do the W for this. It's a capital W with the little pointy bottom. And Why am I so picky about how I write my symbol for that? Because you've already got another symbol for with a W, and that's what. But if you notice, every time I do weight, weight always looks like a lowercase w like that. That way we don't get things confused. So work is equal to, you already know what F stands for, that's force. And now S. Now S is not a letter we've used before for anything. So we know, and I'm going to sit here and make my little cheat sheet. W stands for work. Let's see, F. I don't think there's any sense in me writing that, but we will. And we already know the unit for force. What's the unit for force? It's a capital N for Mr. Isaac Newton. Now, a second ago, I said in order to do work, we need to do two things. Not just use a force, but the object's got a what? So guess what S stands for? Not speed. It's distance. It's how far you move it. So S is distance. Now, if you were like in some, I don't know, maybe a, uh, not an advanced class or something, it might be FD for distance, but we don't use D for distance. We use the letter S for distance, which would be in meters. Now, I want you to go ahead and do something. Can you figure out what the unit would be for work? We'll take a look. Work is equal to force, which is in newtons, times distance. So the unit for work is a newton meter. Now, or this is what I will write, capital J. 
a Newton meter or a joule. By the way, take a wild guess what one of your test questions will be. A joule is a Newton meter. Easy enough, right? Because if you forget, all you got to do is this. Look at the formula, Fs. F is a Newton, and S is a meter. So work is a Newton meter, or it's known as a joule. So anyway, so there is one of your new equations. I'm just going to go through and write down all your equations. We ain't going to get like crazy. Wow, that's a horrible looking W. W equals Fs. All right, now, sometimes, at the very beginning of my notes, uh -huh. I want you to look at this person pulling the, pulling the little red wagon here. Take a look at them. I want you to think about something. When you're pulling that wagon, your force is that direction. Is the wagon moving in that direction? If you pull a wagon, which direction is the wagon moving? The little wagon's going this way, right? So, But when you're pulling on it, part of your force is going up, I'm going to write Y, and part of your force is moving. Guess which force we're actually interested in? The force that's actually in the same direction that you're moving it. Now, we're not going to get into a trig lesson right now. We'll save that for some other time. But I'm going to go ahead and coach you up a little bit on something here. If you see a problem, if you see a problem where the force is at an angle, so in other words, if you see a problem, how can you recognize an angle in one? What do angles look like? How can you identify an angle? It'll be a number with a what? A degree sign after it. So if you see a problem where there's a force and an angle, it'll be the easiest problems in your whole homework. W is equal to F cosine theta S. If you're unfamiliar with cosine, you'll see a button on your calculator. It says COS, it's cosine. Hopefully, you've maybe done that a little bit before. If not, you'll definitely get it more as we go through here this year. So there's our second equation, and I'm going to give you one more, and I love this equation. It's actually called the work net equation, but we're going to do this. One-half mv squared minus one-half. So when would I use this equation? And we're about to work some examples and get started. I shouldn't have to tell you what anything in that equation means by this point. You know that M stands for what? What does the V and VO stand for? Velocity final and velocity initial. So you know what everything stands for. So every formula you need, and this is it. There's no mixing and matching. All you need to do the next seven problems of our homework examples or whatever is just these three equations. So I'm going to say, let's go do some of this homework right now. And I'm going to see if I can't get me a little picture here and move to another page. Oh, spirit ribbons are for sale. Uh-oh. And you're on a color vision. <laughs> ah, I'm messing up the color vision, actually. Ah, uh, delete. Get your spirit ribbons. Get your spirit ribbons right here, ladies and gentlemen. It's a Friday in Alabama. It really is. That is a good time. Not only is it a Friday in Alabama, we are less than, what are we like, 12 days away from the opening of deer season? Woohoo! Roll tide. Makes no sense. Wiggle, wiggle. Bother, get a bother, get a bother, get a ba. Ra ra ra, sis boom ba, wiggle wiggle, war dang eagle, kick him in the butt, big blue. Hey, all right. So here we go. You got to know your body get up. All right. So take a look at this question. How much work is done by dragging a car 50 meters with a force of eight times 10 to the five newtons? Man, this ought to be like you ought to wish you had a whole test of questions that looked like this. What is 50 meters? It's a distance. Uh, that's an S is my symbol for distance. Uh, 8 times 10 to the 5, and that's what that number is. It got a little clip. But that's Newton's, which is a force. And all it said is work. Well, that's easy. Work is equal to force times distance. So all I got to do is 8.0 times 10 to the 5 uh, times 
as 10 to the third. Hmm, apparently I misread my own worksheet. So 8.0 times 10 to the third times 50. Now, the answer is going to be four and then some zeros. Now, if you were doing this in your calculator, how could we do this? How could we do this in a calculator? Well, I'm going to go ahead and take a minute because I know my 10th graders after this long. And they forget how to put numbers like this in the calculator. So I'm going to go through and show them exactly. 8.0. And then I'm going to hit the times 10 to the X button, or EXP or EE button. 10 to the third times 50 equals, oh my goodness, 400,000. So hopefully they're going to go through and make sure they can punch that in their calculator. You could have also just done 8,000 times 50, and that would give you the same answer. But I'm going to write 400,000, 400,000, and now I need to be reminded of my unit, joule, a joule. Now, I'm very fortunate this year. I've got a lot of students who love doing significant figures. So let's go see if we can do sig figs on this. Let's see. The number 50 has three sig figs. What about 8.0 times 10 to 3? How many sig figs is that? Two. The 8.0 counts as two. This is where people always mess up sig figs. If you're going to try and get a number like 400,000 in the sig figs, the only way to sig fig this is to do this. 4.0, that gives me my two sig figs, times 10. How many places did I just move that decimal to get 4.0? I moved it five. So there is, now either one of those would be a right answer. It's just the second answer is in two sig figs. So that's my reason for doing that. All right. And I'm going to move on now to the next question, 400,000 joules. Cool, we got that one. All right, let's do the next one. Ooh, now this one's crazy looking. My goodness, somebody's insane. Look at this, 116 kilograms. What is that? Oh, a mass. Wait a minute, 12.2 ms square. That's an acceleration. Oh, goodness. And then 20 meters is a, well, it even says it. It says 20 meters is a what? A distance. How much work? Man, I wish I had an equation for work. Oh, wait a second. I do. W is equal to FS. Now, there's just one problem. What did this not give you? F. But look at what it gave you. It gave you M and A. Why would the problem give you M and A? So you can do F equals M A. Now we could, now I'm going to say that we're moving up in the world mathematically. We could go over here and do 116 times 12.2. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use some algebra. You just said it. F is the same thing as M A. So I can go back into this equation, and instead of writing W equals FS, what could I write in its place? W equals MAS. So W equals MAS, which reminds me, it's almost Christmas. Aww. Happy, happy, happy. Sorry, I love Christmas. All right, so now let's see if we can't do this one. And it just saves us a little bit of time math-wise. Let's see. M is what? 116. A is 12.2. And then this S is 20. So now we can multiply all that together. Uh, do you see what difference it makes when you can do a little bit of algebra like this in the question? Instead of having to work it, get an answer, resubstitute, we can do it all at once. Uh, I'm going to see if I can't get an answer here for this. This would be what? 116 times 12.2 times 20. And I got 28,304. That's 28,304 joules. What about if you're going to do sig figs on that? Go back up here. We got 3, 3, and three in all our numbers so our sig fig should be three which this one will be easy to sig fig your sig fig answer would be what two eight three and then twenty eight thousand three hundred 
And that would be my sig fig answer on this question. So far, not too hard, I hope. All right, let's do one last example and call it quit. So, uh, okay, hey, uh, oh my goodness, oh my, I'm getting so excited. I just saw something. I see 20 degrees in this problem. That means this problem has a force at an angle of 20. You know what would have been awesome? If somebody would have gave you an equation just to use whenever you had forces at angles in these problems. Wait a second. I'm pretty sure you got one. W equals F cosine theta S. Now, to do this, it's going to be easy. All you got to do is plug in numbers. 60 cosine of 20 S. But I'm going to walk you through it in the calculator. And what is my S in this one? S, S, S is 3. So I got an idea. I'm going to walk you through the calculator on this to make sure. I don't know if you've ever done in physical science cosines and sines before. So just in case, I'm going to show you. So let's walk through it. This is how you put in your calculator. 60 times. Now do you see the COS button on the calculator? Now I've got a problem with mine. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I don't know if you can tell it on my screen, but I've got the letter R up there on my calculator. That means my calculator is what's known as radian mode. Now, if you take me for physics or something, I'll teach you about it one day. Here's the thing. I'm not in radians. My calculator is in degrees. I'm going to be honest. Pretty much for high school, your calculator needs to always be in a degrees mode, which means i got to change my calculator. So for me, I think it's mode, and I'm wrong. Let's go... Let's try it again. Shift setup. Ah, do you see on my calculator it says DEG? I'm going to select DEG and get my calculator in degrees mode. And it needs to stay that way. If yours is not, you ought to have a D or a DG on every calculator you use in 10th grade. So 60 times cosine 20, and I'm going to put that, close my parentheses up on that cosine 20. 60 times cosine 20 times 3. You need to go to your calculator, punch it in, make sure you can get the same number because your calculator may be a little funky or whatever, and you may not get that number. So I'm going to go ahead and put 169.14. 169.14. Once again, what is the unit for work? J for Joule. Now I am going to go ahead and do something. What about sig figs? I got three in that, three and three. So my sig fig answer should have three, which would be what? 169. And there is my answer, and that concludes. Uh, wait, I got one more little hint I'll give you. This is a good hint. If you ever work a problem, say you got a box, and you're going to lift that box, this will be a great hint. If you got a problem and you're going to lift something, and maybe it gives you a mass in the problem. If you're going to lift it, W equals FS. But if you're going to pick something up, guess what your force is going to have to be equal to? How much it weighs. What's the formula for weight? You know what you could do? Since force would be the same as weight, guess how you could do that problem? You could just go W equals, and instead of F, you could write MGS. <laughs> now, wait a sec. When are you going to do this? If you are lifting. And that's a little trick, because I know a couple of the questions you pick something up. So anyway, have fun. Feliz Navidad. Uh, happy Hanukkah. Bye.